All right, so we are going to demo the application of Factorial ANOVA in JASP for the lab. Now, for your lab, I want you to do analysis using the POST variable, okay? Here, I'm gonna do an analysis using this follow-up variable. Now, for this lab, I need you to do write-ups in APA style. I have posted several examples in the modules, Please use those examples. Please be sure to change all the values and variable names appropriately. In fact, it would be better for you to probably write your own next to the example and not just try to change the words in the example. That would be my suggestion. It's always a little irksome when I see that like somebody basically uploads an example that is just matches my example and like didn't change anything. Um, it makes me think that you might be trying to just hope I don't read it all. So <laughs> please, please don't do that. Just write your own next to the example. You'll have a good template to go from that way. And that way it doesn't look like you were hoping you'd get one, you know, pull one past me if you like don't change something in the middle of the paragraph or whatnot, even if it was just by an accident. So that's the best way I can recommend you do it. Use that to write your model from. All right, so we are gonna do an analysis on the follow-up. So these are not gonna be the numbers that I'm gonna expect you to have in your write-up, but these will be a demonstration of exactly how to do that process using JASP. So that should be helpful. So what we're gonna do now is a factorial design. We have two variables we're gonna use as independent or predictor variables here. One that is the true independent, that is it was manipulated by researchers, and one that is a participant variable, gender. Participant variables are variables that we use as predictors, but obviously can't manipulate. I did not manipulate people's gender. They either are a male or they are a female. Uh, but we're using it as an independent variable, if that phrase is used loosely here. So we're going to look at how treatment type and gender affect the manic symptoms measured at follow-up in this study. So the nice news is JAS makes this fairly simple. It's still under the ANOVA option. So we're just going to click on ANOVA. And the first thing we need to do is specify our model. So we're going to first take over what are our factors. Well, we have treatment and gender as our fixed factors. And I'm going to do an analysis here for follow-up as my dependent variable. So you would want to use post to look at that. Now here is what we get. We get the effect of treatment is not quite significant. The effect of gender is not significant. And we get an interaction here that is statistically significant. So here's our F table. Just like the F tables we saw before, notice each effect has its own sum of squares. There is one term, the error term, that is the denominator for each of these tests. So every F value is this number, the mean square for the effect over the mean square error. Mean square for the effect over the mean square error. Mean square for the effect over the mean square error. That produces these three values for F. So each effect has its own numerator term, but the denominator is the same for all of them. Notice that treatment has two degrees of freedom. Why? Because there are three levels. So three minus one, right? Just like we learned in One Way ANOVA. Gender has two levels, so it has two minus one degrees of freedom. The interaction is just literally the multiplication of treatment by gender. So it's always easy. When you just multiply these two DF terms, that gets you the DF or the interaction. So there you go, easy enough to get that. The residual is going to be um, simply take the total number of people you had, just like in a one-way ANOVA, and subtract the number of parameters to be estimated in the full model, right? So that's how many unique groups are there, right? Just like it was in a one-way ANOVA, except for now, how many unique groups are there? Well, we learned in our lecture, the way to solve for that is to solve the design statement. So here we have a two by three design. So if we have a two by three design, Two times three is six, so there are six unique groups because there are males in control, there are males in psychotherapy, there are males in pharmacotherapy. There are females in control, there are females in psychotherapy, there are females in pharmacotherapy. That is six unique groups. With six unique groups, we take our 45 people that are in the study, and we take 45 minus six, and that gives us our 39 degrees of freedom for the error term. So that's how you get these terms, okay? So that's how you can figure out DF for factorial. It's very much so like one-way ANOVA. You just have to realize you have to do an F test that is unique to each effect. So the only real new thing to remember here is that the interaction you can simply solve for by just multiplying the DF terms for your two effects. So here's our F table that shows the results and we get our significant effect here for the interaction. So if we have a significant interaction, we need to follow that up, okay? Now this treatment effect is not statistically significant, however, 
for instructional purposes only, I am going to follow this up with a post hoc test to show you again how to do that. So we've run our primary ANOVA. If you open this first model box, what you'll see is it tells you what all it is modeling. And it's presently modeling everything we want to. This is the full factorial model. That is, there are both main effects and the interaction. That'll be the default, and that'll almost always be what you want to do. In our class, it's always what you want. We talked about assumption checks already. We demoed that in our video for one-way ANOVA. I'm not going to look at those again. We talked about post hoc tests, but I do want to look at that again. So here, we have a two by three design. So one of our factors has more than two levels. Now, it's not technically significant. The p-value here is over 0 0.05. But if that were you know, 0 0.05 exactly, what we'd want to do is do the post hoc test for treatment. You remember that. And over here, we get the effects of, now this is ignoring gender. So this is the differences of the treatments ignoring gender. So if you don't know if the person is male or female, you just know someone's getting treatment, do these treatments differ? And this effect says they don't, and our post hoc tests say, yeah, we can't tell that any of these are noticeably different, averaged over males and females. So we're gonna remove that. We don't actually need it. In this case, it's not significant, but that's a reminder. Don't forget you need to do those if you have significant main effects with more than two levels. Uh, plots are almost always useful. So you probably wanna get a plot. Now, the way you get the plot makes an enormous difference uh, in, in visualization. And you can just choose kind of what looks better to you, what makes more sense to you. So for example, if I do treatment on the horizontal axis and different lines for gender, here's what my plot looks like. Now, let me make this bigger so it's easier to read. Okay, so here we go, easier to read. So what you see here is that we have psychotherapy, pharmacotherapy, and control that are put on the x-axis, and we have a different line indicated by a different style dot for males and females. So now what you see is how do males fare in these different conditions, right? Psychotherapy to pharmacotherapy to control. Now remember, lower symptoms is better, less mania, right? So high numbers bad, low numbers good. Females, here to here to here. Now, maybe this doesn't work for you. Maybe this doesn't make sense to try to interpret it. And if that feels weird to interpret, you can always flip them. And maybe it'll make more sense that way. So if I put gender on the horizontal axis and different lines by treatment, here's what I'm going to get. Okay, so with this, what do I have? Now I have a line for each treatment type, and I have the way that, that a treatment looks different depending on males and females. So for pharmacotherapy, you see that males have very low mania on pharmacotherapy, which is good, but females, they have high mania, actually higher than their other conditions. So this suggests that maybe pharmacotherapy works really got good for males, but not very well for females, right? Uh, psychotherapy and control, you see both females tend to do a little better in both those conditions, but the slopes aren't enormous. So males tend to do, a, you know, the control males are the worst, right? Um, and you see that control females are not as bad as control males, right? So more mania in males. Here, the psychotherapy males have more mania still, less than control, but much more than um, they do in pharmacotherapy. And you see here that females, though, are doing even a little better on psychotherapy than males are. So maybe this graph makes more sense for you, right? And you can always model the graph in the way that makes the most sense, but having a graph is very helpful, as we discussed, for interpreting a factorial ANOVA, and I'm going to expect that you include a graph for your analyses, right? So the three things you're going to need to do are two write-ups and one graph for your lab, okay? Very, very much so producing scientific type work now. All right. Now, under additional options, you can get all of the marginal means. And so here, I'm going to get all of them. It's always a good idea to get all of the marginal means. You can get other types of things like descriptive statistics, which include like standard deviations uh, and effect sizes if you'd like to on, on those as well, okay? Um, and you can do this if you wanna do like comparisons, but let's look at what this gives us down here. So here are the marginal means. You have marginal means by treatment. So the average uh, number of manic symptoms this is in psychotherapy, so it's for men and women together. That's important to remember. Marginal means ignore the other variable. So this is psychotherapy ignoring gender, okay? Pharmacotherapy and control. 
So irrespective of your gender, this is how you did in these conditions. Okay. Now, irrespective of your treatment type, this is males, this is females for their levels. Okay. Now, what we saw is that these don't differ significantly and these don't differ significantly. How do we see that? Up here. This 0 0.055, this effect of treatment is testing these three marginal means to see if they differ, right? Treatment, treatment. And what we see is that they don't quite differ significantly. These marginal means for gender are being tested in the gender effect, 0.887. And as you can see, this is not anywhere near significant because these means are very, very close, okay? Down here, we have the marginal means that reflect the interactions. So these are technically the cell means. So this is psychotherapy for males, psychotherapy for females, pharmacotherapy for males, pharmacotherapy for females, control for males, control for females, right? So these six marginal means are the effects that are tested in this interaction term, and they do differ significantly. There are significant patterns of difference in those six means. And you can kind of see that, like, look how different these two values are, and look how different those two values are, right? Okay. Here are the descriptive statistics, and these give you these marginal means again, and now they report the standard deviation and the group sizes for these things. So you see you have eight males in psychotherapy, seven females in psychotherapy, that 15, 15, 15, that's our 45 participants. So the descriptives give you the standard deviations that you can report for your write-up, and they give you the sample sizes. Okay, so this is some useful stuff to get your descriptives, your marginal means. You're going to need them to fully interpret your results. Now, we had a significant interaction, so the newest thing that we're going to need to add is this simple main effects analysis. And the simple main effects analysis allows us to evaluate interactions, right? So the treatment and gender, and you can have one factor and how it is moderated. And another word for an interaction is a moderation. Moderating effects and interaction effects are the same thing, okay? So here, we're going to call them the same thing. There are some, like, stickler statisticians that'll tell you they're slightly different. They're, most people use them interchangeably. Okay, so here we can, again, the way that we form this, just like the graph, the way that we put this in is gonna change how it looks, right? So let's look at it both ways to see which one maybe makes more sense to you. So here, we're gonna look at our simple main effects and notice now you get two tests. Here's a test of male, right? So this is the effect of treatment in males. This is the effect of treatment in females right? You have two degrees of freedom, so you know you're testing treatment, right? That's what you're testing here. So if you wanted to ask, do the different treatments have different effects in males or in females, you could run your simple main effects this way. This says that the effects of treatment are different significantly in men, but not in women. So this says if you're a female, there might be some, it's like really close, right? But there's not really a clear winner for treatment type for females, but there clearly is a winner for treatment type for males. Now, if you're gonna run it this way, where you have, again, notice this degree of freedom term is greater than one, which means that you have more than more than two levels. You have three levels, right? You're comparing psycho, pharma, and control in males. So that means you would have to do a post hoc test if you run it this way, right? What you're gonna need to do is you're gonna have to do a post hoc test on these effects within this. So if that doesn't work for you or make as much sense, what else could you do? You can flip it. So let's look at it flipped. If we take gender and we do the moderator as treatment, here's what we get. Notice now we have three tests that only have one degree of freedom, which means we don't need to do any post hoc tests. So what we're looking at now is how men and women differ in the different treatment types. So in psychotherapy, there's no significant difference between men and women. In pharmacotherapy, there is a significant difference between men and women. And in control conditions, there's a significant difference between men and women. So what are those differences? To interpret those differences, we need to look at the means. You're testing the means. This is how you interpret it, right? Okay, so psychotherapy, you'd be comparing these two means, 15.5 to 8.9, rounding. Those two means do not quite differ significantly, right? 0 0.062. So in psychotherapy, men and women don't quite differ significantly in their levels of manic symptoms. In pharmacotherapy, however, they do. How do they differ? Well, what we see here is males have significantly lower manic symptoms in pharmacotherapy than females do, right? Control condition, there's a difference. What is it? Males have more manic symptoms in control than females do, right? 
So you can look at it this way if you want to, and that's kind of what this graph is doing, right? Um, and so this graph can be kind of an interpretation of that. So it's really the question, are you asking how the different treatments have different effects in men and women, or are you asking how men and women differ within the different treatments? Now notice, they're very similar. They have slight differences in like the substantive nature of them, but they're the same basic information. So it's just how you want to look at it. How does it make sense to your brain, uh, and how can you tell the story that's appropriate story? You can also consider whether or not you want to deal with having to do, for example, uh, post hoc tests for something like an interaction, right? Because if you if you do um, a simple main effects analysis where there's more than one degree of freedom for the test, you still need to do the post hoc tests for those things, right? So here is what the post hoc test would look like for the interaction effect. And what it's going to do is, again, what one by one comparisons. So here it's comparing psychotherapy to pharmacotherapy in males. And what you see is those are significantly different, right? So males do better right and you can look at the means but the mean difference here tells you as well right because notice psychotherapy minus pharmacotherapy is how this would be right comparison minus right so psychotherapy minus pharmacotherapy you see that psychotherapy must be higher so that's bad so pharmacotherapy giving men lithium is better for their bipolar manic symptoms than giving them talk therapy right psychotherapy versus control right psychotherapy for male versus psychotherapy for female, right? So you get all these one by one comparisons and tests of every single one for whether or not it's significant. Now, that might not help you tell the big story quite as effectively, right? But my point here is that you would need to do this type of thing if you ran a simple main effects analysis, which we have down here, where you had more than one degree of freedom in those tests. With only one degree of freedom, all you have to do is look at the means. So. There's different ways to do this. Um, hopefully this gives you some sense of, of how to get the information out of JASP and what these different numbers mean. Remember, your F tests and your P values are telling you if the effects are significant, right? If the effects are significant, the way you interpret that is by looking at the means. So if there's a significant effect of the interaction, I need to look at the marginal means of the interaction, right? Here are the marginal means of the interaction. And I know that these six values differ right now because it's an interaction and there's so many values that differ I'm gonna to have to follow that up now you can follow that up you need to do simple main effects and depending on how you do simple main effects you may need to also do post hocs within that right if you do one degree of freedom simple main effects you can simply look at which ones are significant like pharmaco and control when you see they're significant how do you interpret them? You look at the means. So I look, okay, pharmacotherapy, male, female. Males are better in pharmacotherapy than females. Okay. Control, male, female. How are they different? Males have more symptoms of control than females. So this is the way that you would fully probe the factorial ANOVA, all the different pieces you're going to need to include. So these write-ups are going to be paragraphs now, not just a couple sentences. Again, there are examples that I have posted for you to use but hopefully this gives you some sense of what you need to do for the lab. Again, all you're really going to need to do different is what you need to make sure you use the post symptoms for, as your dependent variable for your factorial ANOVA. But these are the types of tests you would need to run. This is the type of graph you would need to produce. You can uh, copy and paste this or save this as a picture file and upload it uh, where you're asked to do a picture in your lab. All right. Hopefully that helps.